Good morning and welcome to the fourth day of the fifth international conference on natural resources and sustainable environmental management. As usual, we are having four consecutive sessions with four valuable scientists in each session. This session is the first session on day four room one presentations. Today, we are hosting the Vice Rector of Izmir Institute of Technology, Professor Dr. Alper Baba. Professor Dr. Wahid Nurani and Dr. Aida Hosseini from Tabriz University, Iran, and Professor Dr. Ahmed Jamal Saidam from Hacettepe University, Turkey. Welcome, professors, and thank you for joining this session. Firstly, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Alper Baba to deliver his presentation. Chairman, uh I would like to thank you, all the colleagues, uh, especially Hussein Oja, uh, this important meetings. Uh, today, I am going to give a little bit folks about the importance of groundwater uh, and its related to human health. Uh, my name is Alper Baba. I am from Izmir Institute of Technology. I am working with the Department of the International Water Resources. And uh, just a quick summarize about the water resources. Then I'm going to focus about uh, some case study about the groundwater from Turkey. But you can use this case study for the Afghanistan, Yemen, the many countries, they're almost the same situation. And then also I'm going to focus a little bit about the factor effect of groundwater resources and then later anthropogenic and geogenic factors. But today I'm going to focus a little bit about more about the geogenic factors later, why the Medical geology is related. How can is working with the water resource system? Result and conclusion. As you know, that water is really very important substance. Everybody speak about water, but the behavior of water is very critical because water is a substance in which three state. You can see that gas phase. You can see that the liquid phase. You can see it's on the uh, uh, solid phase. And then is 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 the important things. You see that the fluid state of the water. You know, like ice flowing on the uh, for a like solid state of the um, uh, the ice uh, just flowing or the uh, liquid state. This is important. And then also water is very good solvent for the many soluble substance. Water is substance with the cohesive force also. Water also is in a substance with high adhesion. This is the very important for the engineering application. Water is in a constantly transforming different physical uh, in the water sky water cycle. As you know that if you look at the uh, distribution of water resources, as you see that generally most of the, our water is consists of the brackish water, the, like ocean water. As you know that we have very small percent of water is our fresh water, but in the fresh water just include about the 30 percent of the groundwater resources. Today I'm going to focus about the groundwater system, groundwater resources. If you look at the water consumption in the world, as you see that this is data from 1919-2010. As you see that each sector, like this, this mentioned about agriculture, this is industry, and then this uh, municipality. As you see that each year, you know that the consumption is going to be increased. Generally, most of the, our groundwater, most of the, our water resources used by the agriculture. At that time, when you are compared, you collected all data from Earth, as you see that most of the country used about uh, for agriculture, this consists about 69%. And then industry is used about uh, 19%, and then also about 12% uh, 12 is drinkable water. But the water, you know, uses is a change place to place, country to countries. Look at these pictures in mention about the global fresh water withdrawal. As you see that in here, the red one is, uh, they, they show that the widely dominant, uh, industry widely dominant, uses, 
but the green one is especially agri agriculture white dominant but uh, you see that in here like some countries they use for the domestic and significant agricultures uh, and then if you look at if you look the population density and water potential by continent as you see that especially the asian countries they have about 60 percent of the people when we compare to the 36 percent of water the meaning that the, the people of they they have more people in here we have still the weak water problem in this region and then in the in the europe also same as you see that almost the population is a double when we compare to the uh, the population and then water resources and then but okay the north north american is a not big problem but still in south Afri uh, south american is not big problem but still some part of the south uh, american have a problem with the water scarcity but you see that african they also they more people more than water resources and then uh, you, uh, the, this figure show that uh, if the population going to be increased in the futures maybe we come across a big problem about the water system and then it is uh, according to some assumption some prediction for example john Salson's mentioned about uh, some uh, analyzers and then said he said that in 2050 the population will be reach about uh, 9 billion people you can imagine if you are getting increase so much you know that the people the meaning that you need the, so much water system at that time the many sites many company many institutes working about the draw scenarios they make us a model this stu this study was done by, by some company some of the by uh, nasa as you see that this picture is show that the, about the draw place of the world especially the in like and some asian countries especially the african they have a really they come they will come across big problem about the, in the features about the water scarcity problems but when look at the in the turkey as you see that in turkey this is a sample uh, one of the sample about the groundwater uh, draw scenarios according to this analysis as you see that especially the south of the turkey as have under the risk and and this is 2020 uh, 2020 but if you are check, checked it 2040 as you see that especially central part of turkey and then also maybe some eastern part of the region are uh, really going to be affected by the these uh, problems and then why uh, for example why the turkey because turkey is the, is is very important country because many civilization came and living here and disappeared especially you know that the, the 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 big three empire say in this country like a roman empire greece empire and then also ottoman empire but also in this region we have a many civilization you can see that many ruins in this area why the people come in here why the people do you know live in here the the the, the answer the good answer and the the is related water resources as you see that in here if you are going to the in the, each part of country you will see that some ruins about the uh, uh, groundwater storage ground you know they use the water system especially the part of this part of the region this is we call that the mesopotamia region this part as you see that sumer was done uh, irrigation about sixty thousand years ago in this region and then also if you are going to in central anatolia for example from the sifas from sinop we have one of the hittites as they all of the located in the kazilmark region the meaning that the people is they used to water resources especially romans you know that if we say that roman the power of roman come from the water resources especially roman when enti entire some place they first build the structure water resource structure still if you are going to the northwest of turkey you can go to the western part of turkey you can see many ruins many structure about water storage water system water collection system in, in the region and then in in the in the in the turkey for example we have in the some basin 20 uh, 25 basin uh, this basin is very important because they have a big catchment region for example uh, uh, tigris and Euphrates is you know that they, they appear in the turkey and then uh, this one is going to discharge um uh, sorry this one is recharge uh and say discharge to the uh, gulf region gulf sea and then as you see that uh, oh, each one is they have a different properties each 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 system is a different prop uh, prop properties and then they have important water resources but this one is also a show about uh, some plane at that time 
many of those cities, not just in Turkey, if you are going to just look at the like a China, many city is located on the alluvium aquifers, located on the plain. The the plain is generally the the water storage region. And then it is, you know, this is, we call that at the time, this is a soft place. This is very important. We have to protect this site because still this site is used also for agriculture system. This is some plain. And then the other in the world, and then the, in the many countries, the karstic system is very critical. For example, this is the karstic system of Turkey that we call the Toros karst zones. The, because the tectonic, if you're located in a tectonic system, this part is the, the affected by tectonic. Therefore, the second permeability and porosity is very high in this region. And then, therefore, we can see many karstic features in this area. It is this very sensible for contamination. It is very sensible for, you know, that the, the you know, destruction. Let's see the, you know, that the, for the potential of the water system, generally we need the data about the precipitation because precipitation like any, our budget. And then we know that the evaporation, we lose our water from the evaporation and then some annual surface flow, some leakage from aquifers. And then some, later they, some part was going to the surface and then after then going to the recharge of the ground water system. For example, this is the net usable water, ground water resource, water resources of the Turkey. And then if you look at the Turkey, you know that uh, about, uh, you know that the, the agriculture use about in the world about 19, uh, 19 sorry, 69%, uh, but in Turkey is about 73% is quite more when we compare the world ever average, but industry about 60% and domestic in the, uh, 11%. If you compare with uh, the, some data from the past, you see that from 2010, 2018, as you see in here, the, the you see that it, it is not so much change, but uh, still is uh, 71, uh, for example, is around to 70, 70, 70%. But the industry is going to be increased again. Uh, and the, the, the other one is at domestic uses. Okay, the, in the Turkey, when we say that groundwater, most of the, our groundwater, you know, that's responsible for the devil's switch, this is water uh, institution of Turkey. At that time, because this is the support for the irrigation system and then responsible all the wells, uh, according to their data, they have like 76% from the surface irrigation, but they say that 24% come from the groundwater. But we know that we have more than uh, 1,000 wells, 100,000 wells, they, they just, you know, that the uh, uh, unlinced vast, but generally we compare all the data, all the region, we saw that about 50% our water resources used for the, by irrigation for agriculture, and then about uh, uh, for animal. You can imagine one of the coal, they drink per day about, about 20 liters per day. You can imagine, this is very critical. If you want to do some strategy about the, irrigation, animal, we have to also think about the water resources of the system. If you look at the cities, you know that in, 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 in for example, this is some data from the, in Turkey, we have like 1,399 cities and then also some, uh, some, some small municipality, but do you know that the, the total amount of the water consumption uh, is about like 60, uh, um, 6,193.150 uh, 6, million uh, cubic meters. Uh, but as you see in here, uh, most of the cities, uh, they this kind of cities, they use about uh, 40, 54% uh, their surface water, but they about 46% uh, is the groundwater resources. And then when you look at the rural region water resources, generally, uh, we have like a 40,000, 34,247 uh, uh, town, rural regions. If you look at it, if you collected all data about this one, you see that uh, uh, most of the water come from the wells, some of them come from the springs. Generally, 94% the water come from groundwater. The meaning that the most of the um, rural region is depend of the groundwater resources. When we compare the how much water come from the underground, all the country of the Turkey, uh, Turkey for the drinking, uh, as you see that about the 57 percent of groundwater they used by the uh, human at that time in the city.
come from ground truth. And then four to three is come from surface. But you know that the water scarcity, water stress is very critical. If you look at the amount of water per capita in Turkey, you see that this is some data from the some years. As you see that the, the each years the, the the you know that the water uh, you know the amount of the system is going to be degrees. At that time, one, at the 1,333 uh, cubic meter per person per years, but uh, the, the results show that it is uh, critical in the in the features. And then, if you look at the industry, you know that the manufacturing sectors. Uh, we collected all the data about the manufacturers uh, in the Turkey. As you see in here, uh, most of the, our manufacturers' data, uh, the water source, for example, 61% come from the wells, 26% come from springs. Uh, generally, 80% the groundwater they use by the manufacturing sectors. But it, you can imagine the, all the industry zones. Industry is very important for each country. But I'm I'm just show, show you one of the industry area. But most of the industry they need the water. You can imagine just drinking like a coke. You see that 90 percent, 99 percent, almost the water. You can imagine, for example, when we produce a paper. In the paper, you can if you want to produce one ton of the paper, the meaning that you use about 10 cubic meters uh, for the water. And then if you, for example, if you have a grapes, you want to clean the grapes, you want to selling one ton of grapes, they need about eight. A cubic meters. You can imagine it, we, the, the meaning that industry is used so much water. About the, at that time, 90% of the industry used for the ground water system. And then if you look at the mining uh, industry, generally, uh, the, all the mining in the need water system, but it is interesting now, about 92% of the mining industry, they used the ground water system because they say that this is the cheap, this is the, you know, not, uh, you know, that not, uh, they not pay the money, therefore they use so much water system. And then we know that the uh, pressure on the water resources, we know that the in intensive urbanization, we know that the population growth, we know that the climate change, agricultural industry, all of the affected the system. Especially intensive urbanization decreased the groundwater recharge rate because the most of the cities in the world located in the alluvium region, and this is the water resources area, especially. And then, therefore, this is the effect that increase the flood and the flood risking. This is this is change in the discharge direction of the collection area of the water resources. And then this is make a big contamination problem. And then uh, also, you know that the population growth is the increased the demand for water quality uh, for water, and also the, the, they increase the water pollution. Let's see the some. Uh, do uh, you know that if you look at the see some factors affect the water quality and quantity, you see that every part, for example, this climate change and the pollution, you know, that the structures, the human activity, maybe, you know, all of them affected the, our groundwater quality and quality system. And then you can imagine this is the just urbanization, how can affect the system. For example, this is we have not any building in here. This is for four percent about like a like the evaporation, just ten percent in the runoff. You see that in here recharge about to twenty five percent for groundwater resource. But if you are added the more 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 buildings, look at in here as you see that if you have more structure, more urbanization, the recharge is going to be decreased like a five percent. And then you see that after then we can see the high amount of the um, flooding. You know that uh, this runoff you see that reach about uh, 55 percent and then evaporation is going to be decreasing this kind of region we have a big problem uh, urbanization affected water system at the time in the many countries world and then this is some sample you know that the half can the urbanization affected the alluvium plain water resources system look at this is some for example our, our city in izmir i'm located in izmir you see that the at that time this is the mention about the, the settlement area the green one is the set area as you see that in 1973 as it's going to be increased but at the time you see that uh, you see that how much the increase in the region and then uh, in the future we see that it's going to be increased but this is affected the water system and then therefore with the expansion of urban area impermeable surface are formed groundwater rate recharge rate is uh, decreasing tall buildings and ground improvement affected the uh, direction of the discharge and then 
tall building also can affect both quality and quantity of the groundwater resources. This is the just taken picture is the, the last years from the, this region. And then quality po uh, pollution, you know that the, we have quality is critical as a physical, chemical, isotope, biological, microbiological affected system. We have generally two factor affected water quality, one of the nature and then human based anthropogenic factors. Uh, let's see that the pollution sources, we have generally two type of pollution source. We know that one of them is from the point, the other one is a non-point sources. You see that uh, just let's see that some sample from the because we about the, our countries you see that in the surface water resources as you see that the quality of the most of the quality is located uh, for for surface water the meaning that very contaminated water is a problem in the for futures and then if you look at what is the source where this coming to from this kind of the contamination as you see that agriculture is a big problems you know that the, most of the agriculture they used to many pesticides many chemicals but still is the affected groundwater system this is very critical therefore we have to really educate it very well the agriculture sectors and then you see that the other one come from the wastewater solid waste and then some uh, husbandry you know that this is the affected the more quality if you look at the groundwater system in turkey for example we have not generally not big problem generally is a good water quality but most of the, our groundwater also affected by the uh, agriculture uh, facility. You see that this is the, some values. This is some government data. You see that most of them come from the agriculture, husbandry, and then also the wastewater uh, system. But also we have a many monitoring value in Turkey. This is the groundwater monitoring system. You see that they, they someone is automatic monitoring. Someone is a manual uh, uh, monitoring. You see that this one is the red one is, and then the other one is the uh, monitoring station. We have many what station, but uh, this is the monitor of quality, quantity, and then uh, about um, water level change. But just today, I'm just going to quickly focus about a little bit about the anthropogenic effect. We know that arsenic is very bad. They affected many things uh, because the ar arsenic, natural arsenic, is resource directly related to geological structures such as mineral content, porosity, permeability. For example, in Turkey, they have tectonic regime. If you have tectonic regime, you have to think about the alteration. And then if you have a volcanic regime, you have to think about the alteration. And this kind, if you got your water system, this kind of alteration, they have a high concentration of some element in the ground water system. Look at in, in here, some, the concentration arsenic in ro rock and ores. You see that the concentration is quite high in here. The, some concentration reach like a 40,000 ppm. You see that the limit is about the, 10 ppm for drinking and then this is some two sample you know that look at the, the springs for example the people uh, they they come from the different geological unit they altered uh, formation they use this type of the area uh, you see that uh, just in the northwest of turkey in this part uh, this is the, we compare with the, we collected some many data from the human activity human health data and then for the water resource data we compare together you know that one of the region is for example, one of the this part is not any alteration. They people used to like uh, alluvium water. You know that in the classic materials, but in here they they have in this side they have a altered water system. When we compare the two side, you know that this is the altered system pH. You see that quite low, uh, around the three. Uh, as you see, the electric conductivity is like 380, 40. But if you see that. Uh, the other one, you know that if you have not any alteration, you see that pH is around seven. Okay, the the low pH is a really affected human uh, life, uh, especially in the low pH. Also, we can see some heavy metals. For example, this is the, our region. I mentioned that about the alter region. You see that the, this is aluminium. The limit is 200 ppm, 200 pp, ppb. As you, if you look at the, the values, you see that the, at the values is is very very high. They exit the limit, but the other one is not any problem. We compare the for this one. We we you know just checked the, the local people. We are we take the uh, blood sample, you know neurologic analysis, and then all this result we are evaluated about the neurologic because the aluminium is also related with neurology neuropathy situation. But you see that this is the altered region. This is not altered region. Water resources, as you see that in altered region peoples, they have a uh, you know that low values, meaning that they have a little bit neuropathy problems. And then also at that time, we are working in the laboratory in his Ministry of Technology. 
we can take the, all this kind of water we are used to some most you know that we analyzes many molecule biological pathological analysis behavior analysis in memory we, we still we do this uh, kind of study let's see the other one northwest of turkey for example this more alteration you see that this some alterations systems uh, Okay, as you see that if you are going to a little bit detail, if you take some scan to microscope data, you see that some someone is consists of arsenic values. You can see in here, like a or piment, you know that this vase is affected by the arsenic. Uh, the water come from the, because the, the geology, and you see that this is the iron oxide in this area. They have a monitoring. If you look at the geological area, you see that the arsenic values is is a little bit high in here. Let's see that water resource in this region, you know, that some tap water they use by the local people about uh, you see that the arsenic is 92% in here. You see that some sample from the different region arsenic is quite high in here. You see that uh, some part is, uh, you know, exit 150, you, but generally don't forget the limit is the 10 ppb. And then you see that this is some sample. And then we, dec we collected all the sample for the human blood hairs. Also, we compare the region of the, this site. As you see that the arsenic in the some hairs in the some region, if they have a, like a uh, this kind of alteration, they're quite high. And then look at the, this some sample in the western part of Turkey, one of the important plains, the, because the population is about port to the port two point Turkish population. The area is about two point three when we compare in Turkey. The one point one is water resources. Most of the resources come from uh, groundwater. This is the some sample location from taken from groundwater monitoring system as you see that arsenic values in some parts is really the, why i mention about this one i say that we have to be careful because the rural region the people used to groundwater resources and then there's some industry they use for, for the groundwater system but they have to check about to the quality uh, of the system okay i have a uh, many example in the different part of the region in the also in the turkey you see that in here for example the other region you see that still we have a high arsenic in this area. We know that uh, we, we, we have very bad uh, example from Taiwan, Taipei region. This is Taiwan, Taipei region pictures. You know that this area, the arsenic is very high. They affected the black food diseases. Uh, and then also uh, th this critical for the light. This is some sample about the system. And then also if you have, a, this, is, this is the tectonic zone of the world. And then if in tectonic system, we have also the volcanic region. And then along this old volcanic region, we have huge you know uh, we have high concentration arsenic you see that i'm checking all this part not just in the you see that almost in all the tectonic region this part they have a high concentration arsenic you know that some milligram liter you can imagine therefore we have to be careful about because the uh, affected the system look at in here again the different countries the hot waters because hot water is very useful very green but uh, if they if you are if the people local people rural people going to drink the hot water this is a problem for example, you look at in here, the concentration of the arsenic is quite high in the some region, like, like in Chile region, you know, that in here, like uh, you see that in the Mexico, it's, it's very high. Okay, this is some sample about the arsenic values in Turkey and then the other boron, I'm not, I don't want to go so much uh, detail. Uh, let's, you see that also the, we have in the problems with the, some uh, natural disaster come from the uh, mining activity. This is some sample about this one. You see that this is acid mine drainage system. And then in this type of system, they have a high concentration of aluminum. They have other minerals. This is affected the surface and groundwater system. I took some just some sample. You see that how the stream will be changed in the altered zone. The meaning that in alteration zone, we have to really focus about this. Also, the water level in the world is going to be increased. This is other problems. This is some monitoring class in the Turkey. You collect sample. You see that how can the water level, level related with the time going to decrease and then if you are going to decrease meaning that you are going to change the water chemistry you see that you can imagine at that time the water level is like a in here 20 meters but now is 8 meters in some regions in the in the western turkey that quality is going to change this is the again the uh groundwater in the basin in uh, haram basin for example in turkey first we use the groundwater after then we start to use for the we just, you know, they used to the surface water. We, we, uh, after that, the water level also increased. But still, the problem we have, we use this area for agriculture. But after the, you know, the agriculture, they include many pesticides. Also, we can see that some organic problem now. Okay, uh, generally, the medical geology is is a critical because the, the geology related to uh, human and related to water resources. 
and then volcanic mass transport you know the radioactivity occupation have this all of them is related to uh, 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 medical geology issue this is some bad sample from the in the world you know that in here this is the, some sample from different countries irrigation okay now we have to uh, we have to think about the health problem related also geological resources we all it is very important to find source contamination and it affect human it is important to prepare geochemical and hydrogeochemical uh, maps also it is important that doctors earth science engineers should work together but and then it is the result all the results show that our water resources is going to be decreased our resources going to be affected by the new human uh, natural uh, natural anthropogenic effect and also natural effect therefore we have to be really careful we have to do some analysis we have to think about the, all this procedure and we have to minimize the, our uh, contaminated groundwater resources thank you very much for your attention thank you very much professor for showing the courtesy of being with us today and thank you very much for sharing your valuable research Thank you very much. Our next keynote speaker is Professor Nurani from Tabriz University, Iran. Professor, we are ready for your presentation when you are. Hello, Ojam. Hello, Professor. I shared my PowerPoint. Can you see him? Yes, we can see it. Okay. But uh, I think due to the poor internet connection, I have uh, to turn off my video, if it is possible. That's fine, Professor, no problem. Okay, Professor Nurani, I think Professor Nurani is having some internet connections. I would like to wait for Professor Nurani uh, for a short time uh, so that I hope uh, he will be reconnected. Hello, Professor, welcome back. Can you see? Can you see me? Yes, we okay. can see you, Professor. Okay, so if it is okay, I would like to start my presentation. Yes, uh, Professor, we are waiting. Okay. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to present my lecture, which is about uncertainty assessment of climatic parameters downscaling from GCMs. I'm uh, Dr. Wahid Nurani from Tabriz University and also from Near East University. As you all know, nowadays our globe and Earth are faced with uh, big problems due to the climate change and global warming and of course their impacts on our environment. Actually, climate change and its impact is a big challenge and is a hot topic for all hydrologists and ecologists in all over the world. Almost every day we can see and we can hear in media several bad news about climate change and its impacts on our environment. For example, I can say about hot days in cities and regions, 
Well, previously usually did not experience such hot days, but now they do. Or I can point to drafts and floods, or I can point to huge and horrible fires. A few months ago, we all heard about such uh, fires, not only in Mediterranean countries, such as Cyprus, Turkey, Greece, but also in about all other countries in the world, say in Iran, in Japan, in USA. Uh, here, I would like to show you a very short clip about such uh, disasters due to the climate change on our environments at different points at different cities in the world. These are only a few examples about uh, the impacts of climate change on our daily life at different points of the country. Hojan, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Professor. Everything is fine. So, according to such important and critical issues with regard to the climate change, it's needed to use uh, some mathematical tools to develop and to create some robots methods to investigate and predict climate states in future to have a reliable plan and decision making to cope with and to mitigate the related disaster with regard to the climate change impact on our environment. GCMs are as such methods uh, that different institutes at different countries of the world already provided and still they are providing such a data set in order to investigate a climate change condition not only in the future but also in the past in order to have an insight into the physical process of the uh, climate change uh, if i uh, point to some pioneering studies i can say about okan okan and kurdemir also about Altulabi, which already the GC data and GCM data sets to investigate climate change and climate change hydrological impacts at different points of the world. But uh, the main problem with regarding the application of uh, such GCM data is that such GCM data are usually provided at uh, coarse spatial resolution. For example, say at uh, one degree spatial resolution, which uh, make it difficult to be applied for uh, local region. So prior to the application of such a course resolution data to our local studies needed that we do downscaling of such uh, CMD and we should do localization or we can say regionalization of uh, data in order to do that in order to do downscaling of gcm data there are uh, two uh, kinds of methods statistical downscaling methods and dynamical downscaling methods in the dynamical downscaling methods usually we use uh, continuity equation or mass balance equation or energy balance equa equations uh, some physical ways equation in order to do downscaling. But on the other hand, in the statistical downscaling, we usually just use uh, some black box uh, method just to make a uh, black box relationship between inputs and output without any uh, knowledge about the physical process involved within the uh, physical of the process. Uh, I can point to multilinear regression and correlation analysis as the puner uh, methods and the classic methods of statistical downscaling but most recently uh, by developing uh, 
modern computers and uh, by developing computational method, artificial intelligence based method, for example, artificial neural network method have been widely applied for statistical downscaling of the GCM data in order to make them uh, available in the local scale. I can point to the Wilby, who maybe was the first uh, scientist that used statistical downscaling method in order to downscale GCM data, and then Chadwick or Buddha or Capzone all applied artificial neural network method in order to do downscaling of the GCM data. But uh, despite acceptance performance of the artificial neural network in the point prediction of the process, such artificial neural network method usually does not convey any information about accuracy of the prediction and sampling error or uh, to be briefly nothing about the uncertainty of the modeling. We know there are some uncertainty source in the modeling, in the data, in the uh, nature of the model, in the parameters of the model, but point prediction of the artificial neural network does not convey, does not provide any information for the source of such uncertainty. Uh, two well-known tools uh, for quantification of the artificial neural network performance and uncertainty are confidence interval and prediction interval. In the confidence interval, well, uncertainty associated with true model is provided, but on the other hand, in the prediction interval, uncertainty associated with modeling error as well as true model uh, will be provided. So we can say that uh, prediction interval is a bit wider than a confidence interval and uh, uh, a bit better information about the uncertainty of the model. As a classic technique for prediction interval, should I point to delta technique uh, presented by Wang and Ding or classic Bayesian technique proposed by Mekki or mean variance estimation based technique or uh, very well known bootstrap technique. But most recently, uh, Khosravi and et al. Uh, proposed and presented a new LUB method in order to uh, estimate and in order to construct prediction interval within a series of uh, papers. In the LUB method, in contrast to the previous and in contrast to the classic method, we do not uh, Compute uh, prediction interval. In the classic method, we do that in the two separate steps. At the first step, we perform uh, artificial neural network based modeling. And in the second step, uh, we estimate and we construct a uh, prediction interval. But in the LUBE method, we only have one artificial neural network to fight upper and lower bound of the uh, prediction. So if we have upper and if we have lower bounds for the uh, prediction, then we can say we have a prediction interval. As you can see here, we don't have point prediction. Instead, we have two, uh, two outputs, one representing upper bound and next representing lower bound in order to construct prediction interval. And such prediction interval construction is not dependent any uh, prior uh, PDF estimation. With this regard, Kasivastama and Tamino and Chao applied LUBE method in order to uh, construct prediction interval, respectively, for rainfall runoff modeling and uh, discharge modeling at different uh, watershed. Uh, in another works, uh, Kumar and also again Kasivastama and Sut here uh, applied other types of. Uh, PI construction method in order to construct prediction interval for some case study and for some hydrological application. But if uh, I would like to show you within a unique framework the work and the operation of such LUBE method for downscaling of the GCM data, uh, I can point to this uh, slide. Here we have different GCM, as I already said, uh, there are so many GCM provided by so many institutes, 
from many countries. Each uh, GCM has its own advantages and also limitations. We cannot say that one GCM is super and superior for all other GCMs. No, one GCM will be good for one case study for one time, and another uh, GCM maybe uh, will be better for another case study. So in this study, uh, we use three different uh, GCM, CAN, BNU, and INM uh, GCM data set, but uh, because such GCM data set include huge number of parameters as a potential input data, at the second step, uh, it is needed that we apply uh, robust and uh, reliable uh, input screening method in order to select dominant inputs. Then these dominant inputs are imposed and are fit first for point prediction and then for prediction interval construction, we applied both classic bootstrap method and uh, newly proposed LUBE method, and then we compared uh, the result of these two uh, methods in order to construct prediction interval. Uh, the cases that the areas were two stations in northwest of Iran, Tabriz station and Ardevil station. We had data from the station for precipitation and uh, for temperature. These two stations, these two cities, both are uh, placed in northwest of Iran. Almost uh, they are uh, close together, but the region is a bit uh, different with together. Our devil usually uh, experiences very cold winter, but Tabriz, um, the winters are almost moderate. Uh, we use observed data obtained from Iran Meteorological Office for period 1951 until 2012, 1975 until 2012, respectively, for Tabriz and Ardeville station. For the GCM data, we downloaded and retrieved uh, the data from Deutsch Institute. Uh, the GCM data uh, for the historical data, we use 1950 until 2005 data as historical data or as our base period in order to develop the modeling. But for the RCP data as a uh, projection scenario for the future, we consider 2005 until uh, 2100 GCM data for projection or for simulation by the developed and by the calibrated artificial neural network. As I already said to you, we use the data sets from three different uh, GCM, CAN GCM, INN GCM, and BNCM. I already said to you that for each of these GCMs, we have uh, many atmospheric variables. For example, for uh, Canadian GCM, we have uh, 120 large scale atmospheric variables only in one node, of course, at different uh, pressure uh, levels. We also have 95 and 95 again for uh, other GCMs. These are only for one point. You know, for each station, we have four surrounding nodes, four surrounding grids, points. So if we summarize these values and multiply these values, uh, this summation to four as a representative of four nodes surrounding by the station, then we will have 1,240 parameters. And if we apply classic trial error method in order to examine and in order to find the optimum uh, artificial neural network uh, structure, it will be very exhausting and very time consuming process. So uh, we applied a robust mathematical tool for the screening and for uh, dominant input selection, name, mutual information theory. Uh, previously, Ahmadi and uh, Baganam and uh, Nurani applied this method in order to select dominant inputs. Again, here in this study, we applied the same method. Mutual information usually um, calculate the nonlinear uh, correlation between input and output, and then each parameter having 
a large value of mutual information could be imposed to the artificial neural network as the dominant input. Uh, for the artificial neural network point prediction, we apply group mean square error, nice out split efficiency, as well as correlation coefficient as evaluation criteria. But on the other hand, for evaluation of uh, prediction interval estimation methods, we have two paradoxical criteria and which criteria. The coverage criteria shows how many observed data are felt within the prediction interval. But on the other hand, which criterion shows the length of the uh, prediction interval. So, and imagine these two criteria are uh, behavior at the vice versa direction. So, uh, in, for the optimization purpose, as a multi-objective optimization problem, using a penalty function, we created CVC penalty function as an uh, objective function for the optimization of the artificial neural networks in order to calibrate the parameters of the artificial neural network. In this slide, you can see the flowchart of the method to optimize CVC optimization objective function. First, we should split data into two uh, subcategories of data subset and train subset. Then we initialize genetic algorithm. In this study, we apply genetic algorithm as the metaheuristic method of the optimization, but other kinds of metaheuristic method, for example, are PCO particles form, or for example, ant colony, or latingly can also be applied similarly. In this study, we applied uh, commonly used genetic algorithm method. Uh, first, uh, first generation of the genetic algorithm and related chromosome should be generated, and then a prediction interval should be created. Uh, then we repeat uh, this procedure until to reach to a step stopping uh, criteria. Uh, as I already said, you in this study to have uh, a benchmark model, we also applied the classic bootstrap method in order to compare the opt-in result by the LUBE method. In the bootstrap method, we have original training data set. We do subsampling and we created some subsamples from the original training data set, say P1, P2, etc. And then for each of these subsample, we create, we train, and we develop separate artificial neural network. And then the output of each are combined with together in order to create overall prediction interval. But as a limitation of this method, the optimized uh, prediction interval will be semester. But for the LUB method, no, not necessarily the prediction interval would not be symmetric around the observed value. Now, uh, I will show the optimized results. In this table, you can see the selected dominant input for both uh, station and for both the station of Tabriz and, and Ardebil and for both parameters of temperature and precipitation. As you can see in the table, the selected uh, dominant parameters uh, from each uh, GCM uh, are different in parameters and are different in the uh, stations. And then we normalize the data and impose the data into the RTL network models in order to do point prediction. But as I already said, you, in order to reduce the uncertainty involved in each GCM data, we perform ensemble modeling. It means uh, the output of each GCM again were fit as input to another artificial neural network in order to get overall output of the point prediction. With this uh, method, with this method of ensemble, we can use advantage of all GCMs within one framework. In this slide, you can see the result of point prediction. According to the result, uh, I present uh, result for single GCM data as well as for ensemble 
as you can see in the results uh, in symbol gcm modeling could lead to better performance with regard to the uh, gcm which were used individually for the model uh, also uh, in the completion of the modeling performance between the two parameters of the temperature and precipitation we can see that the performance of the modeling in the temperature was a bit better than uh, precipitation this is because of that the temperature uh, time series are usually smooth and are usually behavior in a deterministic manner but uh, we now precipitation time series are not uh, this slide and this table show uh, the result of uh, prediction interval optimization considering different penalty function we can see that using penalty coefficient of 10 the cvc will reach to its minimum values and in uh, this table and in this slide we can see the optimal result and we can compare the optimal result uh, of the prediction interval estimation via both bootstrap and lube method here we can see that the result obtained by lube is a bit better than bootstrap classic bootstrap method this is true not only for individual uh, gcm but more uh, remarkably for the ensemble modeling we can see that the ensemble modeling could lead to much better picp and NMPIW result, uh, and also, again, both for temperature and precipitation, and also both for Ardeville and Tabriz. And here you can see uh, the CVC values for both methods. The CVC is the uh, objective function, multi-objective function values. Again, you can see that the CVC obtained by LUBE method is uh, less than CVC uh, value obtained by the bootstrap method and because our ultimate was to minimize CVC value so we can say that LUBE method could lead to better performance and in this slide you can see the overall optimal time series via point prediction with regard to the observed value as well as prediction interval constructed via both LUV and both bootstrap method for both station and for both uh, parameter of uh, precipitation and temperature. Uh, after uh, modeling and after calibration of the artificial neural network and computing uh, prediction interval for the base period, we applied the trained methods uh, in order to generate and in order to project uh, for the future in this uh, slide you can see the projected uh, time series uh, for precipitation and for temperature but only for uh, january months so uh, if we go ahead you can see of uh, precipitation usually for the precipitation, uh, usually we don't have a significant trend in the future, but for the temperature, we can see, we can see uh, a big trend, a big trend uh, that, uh, as you can see, this big trend started from now until the future. It means that the temperature in these two stations will go up in the less yes i i'm going to present the conclusion of the results uh optime results show that lub method was able to construct narrower prediction intervals with higher coverage probability compared to the bootstrap method also results show different performance of gcm for various station and various GCMs. Ensemble of GCM lead to reliable results and uh, PICP was up to 20% higher and NMPIW was up to 50% lower than when we apply single GCM data. 
uh, downscaling temperature content, lower uncertainty compared to precipitation, point prediction of ANN for temperature was 53% uh, uh, higher and for the uh, prediction interval construction. Uh, among single GCM, we saw that Canadian GCM showed a bit better performance for downscaling of precipitation of Fabris and for downscaling of temperature for the air devil. But on the other hand, we showed better performance for downscaling of Fabris temperature, but for the air devil, it was much better for the precipitation. If I uh, give some suggestion for the future study, I may uh, say that uh, GCM uh, contains high level of uncertainty. It is proposed to assess the source of such uncertainty. In this study, as I already said, you, we applied genetic algorithm, but other meteoristic method can be used similarly. According to the better performance of modeling in the daily scale, it is recommended to use daily data and to do daily downscaling. Other water weather parameters like evapotranspiration, humidity, air pressure, or uh, solar uh, radiation can also be modeled via the proposed methodology. And in this study, we uh, applied two uh, methods of LUBE and uh, bootstrap uh, in order to construct prediction interval, but it is suggested also apply other classic methods. Okay, thank you very much. I'm under your disposal for comment or any question. Thank you very much for the valuable pr uh, presentation, Professor Nurani. Thank you very much, Oja. We are very pleased to have you here with us. Hopefully, after two weeks, I will come. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> we hope so. We hope so, Professor. Thank you. I miss you. I miss you and miss uh, nearest university as well. Thank you very much, Professor. We miss you, you too. Thank you very much. Okay. Our next valuable guest keynote speaker is Professor Dr. Ahmed Cemal Saydam from Hacettepe University, Turkey. Welcome, Professor. Welcome. See you. My nice see you. Good morning. Good morning. Professor, uh, we are ready to hear your presentation uh, when you are ready. All right. I think I'll have to switch to my presentation and then share it. Share screen. Which one I should share screen work? That's on a good. Please choose the window selection, Professor. All right, this is the one which I'm going to, I think it's all right. Huh? You can see my presentation. It's all Not right yet, now. Professor. It's all right now. No, we cannot see your presentation. Oh, what should I do then? Choose what to share, entire screen, yeah. No, Professor, uh, instead of entire screen, uh, please choose the window selection. Window selection, all right, yeah. Now it should be all right. Is it all right now? Yes, Professor, we can see, and I would appreciate it. Yes, perfect. Yeah, all right. All right, good morning to everyone once again. My presentation is entitled uh, as the, the impact of desert dust on natural systems. I'm a retired person now. I work for the uh, Hacettepe University Department of Environmental Engineering. But since uh, three years now, I'm uh, a retired person. All right. In the natural system, we all know that uh, iron uh, present in nature in its uh, plus uh, 
three form and in this form it cannot be uh, utilized it's got to be reduced to iron 2 in its reduced form and uh, that's why uh, we need bacteria and their enzymatic process to make this conversion from iron 3 to iron 2 it uh, requires energy and it's uh, it's a slow process but it happens all the time and we use iron as in plus 2 state the, the way i explain this uh, is also as follows i mean if you cut your hand or anywhere in your body uh, the blood uh, runs in red color the reason why the iron is in its plus three state it's red hemoglobin but the body cannot use this iron three it's got to be reduced in iron two and everybody uh, knows this one and we put this uh, fact to aside the other interesting thing uh, as in my title is the transport of desert dust this is a typical example of dust transport from Sahara towards Turkey. This was interesting because you can see this huge amount of dust transporting all the way from interior Sahara, crossing the Mediterranean and reaching all the way to Black Sea. And distance wise is 2,600 kilometers. And if you measure in terms of area, as a simple area, it turns out to be 1.1 or 1.2 million kilometers square. But the scientific world always uh, sticks to uh, dust transport itself. I mean, if you look at this dust transport, all right, if you measure the size area, you can do it easily because you lose the signature of dust when it mixes with the clouds, as you can see here. The dust is still propagating, but we cannot see it because the, the cloud masks the dust. And everybody involves in this aspect, I mean, how much dust is transport, uh, how it looks like, because the satellites now uh, gives us an excellent uh, platform to observe the dust. You can see the dust uh, covered all the entire uh, eastern Mediterranean. You can see the Cyprus because the dust is on, on, not on top of Cyprus at the moment. You can see it very clearly. But if the dust comes, of course, it obstructs the, uh, the view. Oh, and this is a typical example. Another typical example is uh, dust and cloud and snow cover I and mean, it tries to tell us something but which we cannot figure out this is yet another uh, picture from the eastern mediterranean where you can see the cyprus island turkey and all eastern mediterranean this one is interesting because you can see the top of the torados mountain uh, on cyprus but you cannot see the rest of the Cyprus. So this tells us that the uh, transport is in the lower uh, atmosphere, but it happens at any place. And at some places it mix with the uh, cloud itself. And everybody says to the scientific world, say, well, that's typical, that's normal. There exist some other uh, massive mass transports, uh, dust transport events as well. I mean, this is the African continent, the Great Sahara. And you can see the uh, dust originating from the mid-Africa, reaching all the way to Atlantic and re even reach all the way to Spain. And this uh, distance is more than 10,000 kilometers. So think about... Uh, such a massive dust transport event taking place, seeding all the oceans and everywhere. I mean, this happens uh, all the time. Yet another uh, spectacular uh, picture showing you the dust coming from Sahara and covering all the Western Mediterranean region or mid-Mediterranean. There exists a number of events, even today we are expecting yet another dust transport from Sahara towards Mediterranean. 
people try to uh, estimate uh, how it takes place, what is the seasonality uh, of it by considering the dust sources all over the world. Sahara is the biggest desert dust which cover, governs all the Atlantic, uh, Asia, and even the Eastern Asia. Uh, yet another dust sort is the U.S. dust, uh, Arizona, Nevada deserts, Mexican deserts. And of course, in the Asia is the Gobi and Taklamakan is the major uh, two sources of dust. In the Southern Hemisphere, we also have the dust sources is the great uh, Australian deserts, Namibian deserts, or the uh, high plateau of Uruguay. Not, uh, not Uruguay, Bolivia. These are the dust sources uh, uh, giving us an amount of dust towards each ocean. Of course, satellites uh, gives us another perspective. For example, this is the dust pulse uh, emanated from the uh, Gobi Desert reaching all the way to uh, North Pacific. But you can see that the cyclonic movement is associated with the dust movement as well. Dust is leaving the desert, comes with the warm front, and then the northern air mass comes with the cold air front. So this is a three-dimensional uh, movement always taking place in the atmosphere. And the fourth dimension, it, it travels towards the east. This is the, in line with the world. Uh, uh, orbital movement. So there exists <clears throat> all sorts of movements. I mean, the propagation, the vertical movement, the cold air comes in, and then the dust and cloud is really mixing up there. This is yet another major dust pulse which took place in uh, 1998, and people modeled this one. And this one is even uh, reached all the way to Europe. So you can see the, the massive uh, uh, amount that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about only the local businesses. I'm talking about global uh, progress, global uh, problems, or global uh, natural events that takes place uh, and that affects all of us. But we have yet to realize the importance of this uh, event. This shows us uh, the monthly dust uh, event took place during the March 2021, for example. This is you know, Southern uh, America, this is Northern America, this is Sahara. It's so much dust that the land mass is already masked, but these are the this was the situation during the March 2021, and this was affecting all of us without realizing. So people, uh, and this is what's underneath it. I mean, you can see that my red point is over the Sahara, and you can see that how Sahara is impacting the Southern uh, America, how it's impacting the Amazon forest on a daily basis. We are transporting millions of millions of tons of dust towards Amazon, for example, and then towards Europe, towards East. And then the globe, Gobi Desert pumps quite a lot of dust towards Northern Pacific and greater Australian desert and Bolivia uh, high plateau and Argentine deserts pumps quite a lot of dust to Southern Ocean. And as I told you, this was the picture behind this dust pulse events. And this was the monthly dust pulse only specific to March 2021. So you can guess the, the amount or the mass that I'm talking about. So uh, let me jump to this one and then go back once again. This is the sampling done at our Eastern Mediterranean coastline. We sampled the dust uh, with bacteriological perspective. You sample the air and put it on agar and observe what sort of microorganisms are growing on it. And this is it. 
we have quite a lot of microorganisms growing or transported with the dust. And you, the next question, as I told you, how come the desert can host such a variety of microorganisms? Because by itself, it desert. It has no value apart from sand and uh, clay minerals and rocks. Uh, there exists nothing else. And this is the picture from, uh, for example, Tassili Najar. And Tassili Najar National Park is located at the south eastern uh, Algeria, where there was no rain since the last uh, 100 years. So how can such a uh, unfertile land can supply such a microorganisms? Then you have to look at its uh, geological past. <clears throat> These are the cave drawings from the Tassili Najar uh, National Park. So these are the drawings uh, which has an age of 10,000 years. And as you can see, they draw the hypo. They draw crocodile. So how come this area can host? I mean, this is the present day picture. And this present day picture used to host all these animals, hypos and crocodiles. So it means that that area was always covered by a bit uh, all the necessary ingredients that can feed all these animals, hypos and crocodiles. So what happened to the remnants of all those animals? Of course, the organic fraction is destroyed, destructed. But some parts can still uh, sustain their identity, and these are the heart skeletons of those animals and major, mainly their chitin uh, <clears throat> skeletons are capable of uh, keeping their identity for thousands of years. And this was uh, at least 10,000 years ago, the Sahara was hosting all these animals. So uh, the picture now becomes much more meaningful. If you sample the air with the bacteriological perspective, you can find all these uh, bacteria. We have done it uh, recently once again. That was from one paper from my uh, friends, and this is our uh, measurements. When we uh, sample the air which comes from Sahara, uh, you get all these bacteria and fungi. And then the question comes out, oh, what's in there? Well, I say you ask the wrong question. You should ask what is what is not there? Because that's natural and everything what uh, exists in the nature you can find in the atmosphere as well. Of course, we have some air uh, as we are experiencing today uh, coming from northern area, coming from the interior, uh, Russia, for example. And when you sample the air bacteriological, this is what you found. You found nothing, no bacteria, no fungus at all. These are experimental results. So let's come to this one. I mean, the, the, uh, the soil is for irrigation. We all know how we proceed with the uh, Agriculture, we soil is for irrigation, we irrigate it, we get the crops and everything. But if you don't, it dries, it cracks, and then it's prone to uh, wind erosion, and then the dust uh, becomes uh, uh, very small particles, and then the very small particles can be transported for uh, long distances. But during their transport, they have a chance to encounter with the cloud. So what was cloud? It's a water droplet. So what we have done, instead of uh, throwing so water into the soil, what we have done this time, we have thrown soil into the dust. Exactly the same thing. This is uh, water we have thrown dust into the cloud. It's an analogous, analogous of uh, land irrigation, exactly the same thing with one difference. And that uh, big difference is the uh, Beers-Lambert law. Beers-Lambert law always uh, takes place within the 
cloud droplet because the solar light is there and the as you can see the cloud thickness is uh, quite a lot and then it appears as dark maybe one kilometer here maybe a few hundred meters here so you have this bs lambert law always uh, taking place up there which have, which we have uh, ignored so far so what happens up there when the dust with all these uh, microorganisms get wet the bacteria and fungi uh, within the dust particles becomes active within uh, minutes and when they become active they release some organic acids and so in this case we taken the oxalate and uh, with the clay mineral it forms iron oxalate and one mole of water which is very important and with the association of solar light intensity this iron oxalate decomposes and forms iron 2 and one mole of carbon dioxide at the beginning of my talk i mentioned you about the importance of the iron 2 iron 2 is important because it is readily consumed by the by mother nature so this has been produced and released into the atmosphere up there during each dust transport event. Now, when you look at this picture, it becomes much more meaningful. I mean, during the dust transport events, we have bacteria and fungi, and all these events are releasing uh, iron too into the environment, which is used by the bacteria. This has been shown by the maize at all that uh, it's not the organic, it's not the uh, iron too, but all these essential amino acids also found within the rain samples uh, in, uh, in association with the uh, Saharan dust event or rain event. All these amino acids. Amino acids is the, the most important ingredient uh, of life because it's a building block of proteins and protein means life and i told you it's uh, dependent or well, let's if we go back this reaction is dependent on light intensity but the light intensity changes all the time for example for during january the northern hemisphere is lacking uh, intense solar light but the southern hemisphere is very getting very intense solar light so the, the carboxylation reaction can take place at the southern latitude, but not in the northern latitude. But if you come to May, then the northern latitude gets ample amount of uh, solar light intensity. And this reaction takes place within the cloud droplet. We have tested this one by using real samples, and we have shown that when you do the experiment with the uh, desert dust, uh, you can get, for example, 4,500 units, let's say, of iron two. But when you do the uh, same experiment with this uh, dust uh, samples taken from Saudi Arabia, you get very less. And so-called uh, fertile Anatolian soil doesn't give any iron two as well. So the definition of the desert changed. I mean, we live in the desert, but the desert is a very fertile area. So this is what happens. Uh, schematically, I can show you that this is what happens during daytime. Iron 2 forms within the uh, cloud droplet. And when it comes down, it brings all the rain and carbon dioxide and amino acids, and then the nature benefits. But during daytime, nighttime, this cannot take place because the solar light intensity is not there. And iron 2 is not stable and to oxidize back to iron 3. So we get uh, this all this fertilizing effect during the daytime. Let me skip this one. Once you understand the problem, it's easy to imitate it because in order to get iron 2, you have to follow this scheme. Desert dust is iron 3. So desert dust can be transported in dry or in wet form. If it's dry, it's no good because iron 3 goes up and iron 3 comes down. If it's wet deposition, you have to ask two questions, nighttime or daytime. Nighttime has got no effect. 
daytime is effective. But then you have to ask yet another question, whether the solar energy is adequate or not. If it's not, it's iron three. If it is adequate above certain levels, then you get iron two. And iron two is the form of iron where the uh, nature can benefit. So I've been to the Sahara and collected samples. We imitate the solar light cloud and receiving body. And then we've done quite a lot of experiment. And this is what you get. This is the result of a PhD thesis. And this is uh, all the genetically uh, identical seeds, the uh, wheat seeds. And this is what you get by using pure water. This is by Anatolian soil. And this is by uh, desert soil. And this is the control. This is heavy solution where you can find all the necessary fertilizers in it. So you can get even better results with uh, Saharan desert if you know what to do, when to do. So, for example, Sahara Andas, as I told you, reaches to uh, Amazon forest on a daily basis, and every noon time it rains, and this is the result: Amazon forest, and this is it in a close-up. So, people cut the trees in order to reclaim some land, but they found nothing. It's only water, and the reason is not. The water they are living in, the reason is what's coming up from atmosphere. Of course, it doesn't settle on the uh, land. It settles over the seawater. And this is what happens when it settles over the seawater. So this is the Saharan soil. So if it settles over the seawater, you get identical algae bloom as well. So this is uh, really concentrated as fertilizer solution. So it means that it enhances the, the chlorophyll. And the chlorophyll is the most important thing for fisheries life or for climate as well, because it enhances the algae bloom and the algae is a sink for the carbon dioxide. Uh, the nice thing is that this process is sustainable. I mean, it's as I told you, all our activities is designed to understand how the natural systems are functioning and microwave technique and improve techniques to imitate it. They've done it quite a lot of times and the Southern Ocean Iron uh, Enrichment Experiment, it's called, because John Martins once said that uh, iron hypothesis, if you open ocean is the lacking of uh, desert dust so it doesn't get enough uh, iron so the phytoplankton cannot bloom so they went out there and they added iron to iron in the form of iron too and they observed the algae bloom and in that uh, saying uh, the late john martin said that give me half a tanker of iron and i'll give you a nice age because if you control the algae bloom you control the DMSP, DMS, MSA, sulfate cycle, where the sulfate is the cloud forming agent. So you can reduce the solar light intensity, hence control the uh, climate. He said, give me half a tiger of iron, I'll give you an ice age, but now we have to make a small alteration and give me a jumbo jet full of desert origin soil and I'll give you an ice age. Because if you control what's happening within the clouds, you can control the algae bloom, you can control the climate. So with this, uh, I reached to the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you for your patience. We hope that uh, we can do it and control the climate. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation, Professor. It's a pleasure to meeting you and to hear your interesting presentation. Thank you. Now, as our final keynote speaker, I would like to invite Dr. Husseini to deliver her presentation. But I have been informed that, sadly, 
Doktor Hüseyin'i couldn't connect due to some technical problems. Doktor Ayda Hüseyin'i yesterday had similar connection problems and she couldn't be with us due to poor internet connection. However, she has shared her pre-recorded video with us just in case so that we can share her research by a pre-recorded video. I would like to thank her in advance for the valuable research she has shared with us. Uh, we hope that we can be together in the next conference either online or preferably face-to-face, -face, Doctor. After saying that, I would like to state that this session will be closed after the video presentation of Dr. Husseini. Checking my system, it looks like we don't have any questions in this session. So before closing the session, I would like to thank to all professors who have joined and honored us in this session. And now I can announce this is the end of the first session and next session will begin at 11.30 a.m. Please enjoy the video presentation and see you in the next session. Till then, goodbye. Hello, this is Aida Hosseini from Tabriz University, Iran. I'm going uh, to compare the uh, various predictor screening methods in the statistical downscaling. Before starting my presentation, I do appreciate uh, nearest university to hold such an esteem, uh, esteem conference and uh, wish them a very successful conference. The presentation is prepared in six sections as you see. First, uh, I'm going to uh, state the importance of general circulation models uh, as the uh, data sources for developing reliable uh, hydroclimatological forecasting models. Although GCMs are tools that provide reliable atmospheric data, coarse resolution of GCMs may lead to poor outcomes when applied as inputs to local scale hydrologic models. Downscaling is an approach to obtain local scale weather data from large scale GCMs. Here we name local data as uh, such as precipitation and temperature for the synoptic station as predicted and, and the large scale GCM data as predictor. There are two major technicals to downscale GCM-based climate data, dynamical and statistical downscaling. In this study, statistical downscaling uh, is the aim, uh, aim of study and uh, artificial intelligence methods uh, was used to develop a statistical downscaling model. In order to reach the scope of study, uh, four steps uh, mentioned here. First, data gathering, uh, GCM data from various research centers uh, was gathered, and also synoptic station data uh, for precipitation and temperature uh, prepared. Then a uh, screening method in the second step, a screening method was developed and in the third uh, step, statistical downscaling via artificial neural network and least square support vector machine uh, was performed. And finally, in step four, the projection of precipitation and temperature for near and far future uh, was implemented. In the literature, we saw that uh, several researchers uh, used statistical methods for uh, down scaling, especially artificial neural network and uh, support vector machine methods. 
But uh, while we focus on uh, results of their study, uh, we saw contradictory results. Some of them, uh, some of the researchers state the priority of the artificial intelligence models in statistical downscaling. Uh, others denote the inefficiency of them in uh, downscaling comparing with multi-linear regression models even. This inconsistency may depend on quality and quantity of the applied uh, GCM data. Since uh, GCM data are huge data, maybe with redundant information and involved no uh, noises in these data, uh, the results of AI artificial intelligence models or AI based models uh, affected uh, in this case. So, uh, application of input screening uh, methods uh, as a pre-processing scheme can largely enhance the efficiency of artificial intelligence based models for downscaling, which is the uh, goal of this uh, research. Uh, to uh, pre-process the quality and quantity of uh, GCM data and then reach an uh, efficient um, predictory screening method. We see Tabriz uh, 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 here, Tabriz City, is the study area which is located in northwest of uh, Iran. As you see, uh, Urumia Lake is near the region. Uh, this lake is one of the largest saline lakes in the world and uh, unfortunately due to wrong uh, water resources management policies, also climate change affects uh, climate change impacts uh, it uh, it's going to dry uh, but uh, it started since two decades ago and now uh, the lake has critical situation so it's uh, essential to know about the future precipitation and temperature of the study area to this end, uh, we proposed a methodology in three steps. As you see here, first step is predictor screening, and second step uh, is down statistical downscaling using artificial neural network and least square uh, support vector machine and uh, comparison with multilinear regression methods. In the third step, uh, we have a projection of precipitation and temperature for future uh, using the best uh, statistical downscaling model. Let's see the screening uh, method. Uh, for screening, first we use uh, uh, GCM data, as you see, we use Wavelet and uh, self-organizing map and uh, mutual information methods to develop a novel uh, predictory screening method. The data, GCM data that we have used are uh, data relevant to China, Canada, Russia, Australia, and U.S. Uh, GCM centers data, and uh, the applied uh, variables for GCMs are listed here in various pressure levels. As you see, the huge data set uh, in downscaling issue is uh, coming from several predictors at multiple grid points, uh, which we see the study area Tabris here as the black spot and the uh, GCM 
grid points uh, which uh, we have predictors at those grid points around the city uh, so uh, multiple grid points over long time intervals and uh, and application of several GCM uh, which are available for this study area uh, is the source of those huge data sets. As you see here, we have the CSIRO GCM data. Here we have GFTL uh, data sources. And this is related for uh, Russia GCM data. And uh, these four points relate to China and Canada uh, grid points. As uh, we uh, used uh, the, uh, excuse me, there is inconsistency in this result. As we see, uh, we used Wavelet uh, as a tool uh, to find the dominant uh, periodicities in these uh, uh, predictors. Why uh, did we use wavelets and what's the advantage of using it? Since uh, there are uh, non-stationary inherent in climatic uh, variables, uh, temporal features as well as seasonal attributes are encompassed in such time series. Uh, so we should detect the dominant uh, periods by a tool and its wavelet here for us. Discrete wavelet transform uh, is applied to decompose time series to predictors, uh, time series of predictors into multi resolution subseries. In this way, original uh, time series are broken up into approximation and detailed subseries to represent general trend and different levels of uh, periodicity involved in time series. Okay, in this way, uh, wavelet generated subseries manifold the data. See, uh, for we had this original uh, predictor time series and by using wavelet uh, we reach to nine other time series and it's manifolding the number of time series. Uh, in this way we need a way to uh, decrease uh, the amount of data. So it's, uh, it seems it's necessary to use the abstract form of each time series by maintaining the information contained therein. In this regard, entropy of each subseries was found. And instead of a time series, a value named entropy of this time series is replaced. In this way, a predictor with 600 data replaced by a vector which is wavelet entropy vector with only 8 value or 8 data that each of these data uh, representing one of these periodicities in the predictors. Uh, we did it in two uh, uh, steps. First, uh, for each GCM that we named them uh, single GCMs, we find uh, we found the, uh, the the predictors, then decompose them via uh, wavelet and uh, use entropy for them. See how. Uh, large the data set while uh, using the uh, 
uh, discrete wavelet. So uh, we use entropy of each decomposition uh, subseries. The other approach uh, that we use is multi GCMs. First, uh, we use single GCM. It means that uh, we find the dominant predictors only from Canada GCM, only from China, Australia. Uh, America and Russia uh, GCMs and uh, in the other approach uh, we uh, sum up all the predictors in uh, one uh, pool and uh, f uh, extract the important and dominant subseries uh, from multi GCM pool. Secondly, uh, we use self-organizing map. One of the effective methods to decrease the dimensionality of input space is clustering and then selecting representative members from each cluster. Self-organizing maps as a, a clustering method is used here uh, they are an unsupervised artificial neural network tool that can capture linear and nonlinear statistical relations in complex high dimensional data set and illustrate them via a comprehensible geometric relationship map. Application of uh, wavelet entropies instead of the whole decompo decomposed subseries in clustering procedure can lead to optimized uh, SOM input layer so can improve the clustering performance by reducing dimensionality of data set. The SOM based clustering is implemented over computed uh, wavelet entropies and lead to such clustering. As you see in this clustering, there are uh, various clustering with various number of variables. Uh, we should choose uh, the dominant uh, predictor from each cluster. In order to do this, uh, we have used a uh, mutual information measure which is a nonlinear measure and can find the nonlinear uh, relation uh, between predictor and predictant. After selecting the dominant predictors via a mutual information method uh, from each uh, cluster these predictors are screened and we are ready to calibrate them uh, for the uh, past and historical data which is our baseline and then test them for now and uh, finally project them for future. Two evaluation criteria, determination coefficient and root mean square error, are used uh, to uh, evaluate the efficiency of the developed models. The results of uh, screening method uh, showed that uh, while uh, we have uh, lots of uh, time series uh, that uh, we find from wavelet, uh, wavelet based uh, multi resolution uh, data, uh, data uh, SOM clustering and uh, mutual information uh, filtering can. Uh, show us the dominant predictors. As you see here, for precipitation, 
uh, in single GCM approach, we have, for example, humidity, geopotential height, uh, parameters related to humidity uh, become dominant in Canada. Uh, can ESM to uh, GCM for China we have uh, the other ones dominant and for each uh, GCM we have some uh, dominant predictors also in multi GCM approach we have uh, the predictors which are uh, dominant from various GCMs in various grid points and the same uh, we have dominant uh, predictors for temperature uh, temperature down scaling in both single and multi GCM approach so the results of a statistical downscaling of precipitation via artificial neural network and least square support vector machine shows that uh, the artificial neural network in multi-GCM approach with uh, wavelet entropy SOM uh, screening method reached the uh, best results comparing the uh, other models also uh, comparing the uh, classic multilinear regression model it's very the ann model is also very good the comparison of results of uh, screening method with only with uh, the model that obtained from only correlation coefficient method as the screening method shows a very weak result for the temperature as well we have the ann model in multi gcm approach as the best uh, model the reason of uh, uh, significance of multi gcm uh, approach uh, is rely on the uh, able, ability or capability of uh, each gcm in uh, developing one of the predictors so when we use uh, the uh, multi gcm approach in fact we uh, enjoy all the uh, ability of uh, GCMs together with in temperature also we see uh, weak efficiency of multilinear regression model in comparison to a and n model in the uh, projection for future of precipitation we see that uh, precipitation amount uh, will decrease in near and distant future uh, for both uh, scenarios uh, for both RCPs that we have developed here uh, also in seasonal uh, evaluation of the precipitation amount for future we see that the precipitation pattern changed and uh, during spring uh, it will increase although the amount of old uh, precipitation in a year decreased but the pattern changed and in spring it will be uh, more than the observed one in baseline during baseline and during the uh, summer uh, autumn and winter we see that the precipitation amount is dec will be decreased so much about the temperature uh, we see uh, increasing trend in temperature uh, according to climate change effects and global warming effect uh, however the increase of temperature uh, in summer is not so tangible however in uh, spring autumn and winter 
uh, it's considering it's uh, so uh, significant. Now, finally, according to the uh, GCM based down scaling of uh, precipitation and temperature for Tabriz city uh, we see that we have a decrease of precipitation uh, in distant and near free, uh, future and also increase of temperature uh, at the end of the century here we see the trend of decreasing the precipitation under two RCPs and finally, we conclude that application of wavelet SOM uh, method for predictory screening uh, is a method that uh, can uh, lead to accurate statistical downscaling results in comparison to uh, classic models such as uh, selecting predictors with linear methods such as uh, correlation coefficient and uh, uh, as a concluding remark uh, we can remind that precipitation in this study area will decrease and temperature will increase thank you so much uh, for your attention